Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you happen to be new here, my name is Jess. Just for the record, this is the third time I have filmed this video. I'm having like lighting issues. I am still trying to figure out how to use my camera and just a bunch of stuff has been working against me. And I think it's because as you guys can tell from the title of this video, I'm doing a comic review today on a comic that I was hoping I would really, really love and ended up not liking at all. So I wanted to sit down and film this, but of course I'm having all the problems in the world actually getting it done. It has been like a constant struggle over the last three or four days to actually get a video up for you guys for this comic book. But yeah, I'm gonna try to review it. This is gonna be the last time, so if I seem a little bit scatterbrained, it's because I had already put all my thoughts into one video and then had to refilm it. I don't mind refilming, it's not the worst thing in the world if I have time to do it, but I have been incredibly busy. But yeah, other, aside from that incredibly long intro for pretty much no reason because you guys aren't going to know that I've recorded this three times, I'm going to go ahead and get started with this video. So the comic I bring to you today that I wanted to love that I did not love was Cyborg 9. I really wanted to love this comic. I heard great things about the manga and the anime, but I wanted to read this comic book. I actually saw it at Half Price Books and it was on sale for $8 and I thought, okay, that sounds like a great deal. I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. I should have known by the fact that there were like 10 of them sitting there that this probably wasn't going to be the best comic book ever. What tends to happen at half price is sometimes you will find gems, but generally it is books that people don't want anymore, that they have sold, and the fact that there were nine of them there kind of makes me feel like maybe it's because it wasn't that great, but it did not dawn on me because I was so geeked to read it. This book follows nine people who are kidnapped and they are taken and tested on and essentially turned into cyborgs for this company so that they can be turned into these weapons essentially and in an effort to start World War III. I really liked the story idea for that. I thought it was really cool. I thought it was really interesting. It kind of reminded me of the X-Men in a way because they are all given sort of different superpowers and things like that, but it just really fell flat for me because the dialogue in this is done very badly. I think the writing is done very badly. It was very cheesy, very weird. Um, my husband has actually seen the anime and I let him read bits and pieces of this a couple of days ago and he was like, wow, that is really bad and really cheesy. I will say, however, that the art style in this is very, very beautiful. It's very colorful. It's done very, very well. I really, really love the art of this, but for me, it did fall pretty flat. Um, you're kind of left very open-ended, which sort of makes sense, but also you're given two or three pages of character development for each character in this of the nine, ten people that are in this because there are also supporting characters outside of the cyborgs in this group. And you're supposed to care about them. You really feel like you're supposed to care about them. But I did not care about them whatsoever. I thought that they were very boring, very bland cardboard cutouts. Um, the more I read it, the more it just reminded me of the X-Men and like a rehashing of that. I don't know which came first, however, because I know that the manga is very, very old. It is a much older manga, so I don't necessarily know who was first. I'm not like that big of a fan of comic books, obviously, to the sense of I don't have a whole lot of knowledge about them with when storylines started and things like that. So I don't necessarily know when the X-Men started as opposed to when this started, but it does give me that vibe. Um, the bad guy in this is not necessarily the most formidable bad guy either. I actually found him pretty much just annoying and not necessarily scary. And you're obviously supposed to feel like he is quite scary, but I did not get that vibe at all. Like I said, I really wanted to love this comic, but I did not. I ended up giving it two out of five stars. The only reason I gave it the extra star is because I really at first like the story idea and I love the art in here so much and I think that the overarching story is kind of cool but other than that it pretty much just fell flat for me. If you guys would like my full review that is already in my blog that is listed in the down bar of this video as it is every single week. I just really wanted to love this, but unfortunately, I did not. Alright guys, so that is it for today's video. That is what I thought of Cyborg 9. It's definitely a comic book that I think you can pass on. I think that there are much better ones, you know, at any given place that you can find. I think that this one was not as enjoyable as I wanted it to be, and God, did I want it to be enjoyable. Like I said, I thought the storyline was really cool, and the art was done really well, but other than that, it was just such a hard read for me. But I hope you guys like this video. I hope you guys are liking kind of 
following along on me trying out different comic books and what I think of them and I hope you guys are having a good week. If you did like this video and you'd like me to do more of these, please give this video a thumbs up so I know to continue with this. Um, if you have any other ideas for comics that you'd like me to review, whether they be ones that you have read that you really liked or even ones that you've read that you don't like, I um, mean you just want like another opinion on that, please leave that down below. But I hope you guys are having a good week and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!